Hello again and welcome to Culture Dime. This video is about the process of obtaining a business license in the Bahamas. So most of the process now is online and this is part one. I'm going to make other videos explaining the rest of the process later on. But I'm going to take you through the process now and explain what needs to be done. And as I go through the process, I'm also going to be pointing you towards information and things that you might need to know if I don't cover it in this first video. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so for those wondering, I'm just using Bing for no good reason. And all you do, type in Bahamas Business License. You come down and just click. So that's the first step. And now, you see, I just click there and pull up the page. And what we're going to do, we're going to click on this very first link here. Okay, so this is going to take us to the Ministry of Finances site. Now, the difference, well, this would be our first step. And this is where to get a lot of the information that is going to be required. Okay, so we could click here and this is where we could download a physical form. Um, now, I'm not sure if they're actually even taking physical forms anymore. Um, you might be able to fill it out online and submit it, but the online process that they have, it, there's more or less no need for this. Okay, but you could print form, you could fill it out online. Um, and down here, now this is important. So under here, you have a list of the agencies. So for example, if you if you need to let's say open a kitchen or you plan to open a kitchen at home or wherever rent is based you would need to get in contact with the ministry of health for them to come and view the place so this 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 comes with all of that um so it has the business um the nature of the business the numbers and what you would need from them okay and so here we have an occasional business license now there's three types of business licenses but right now I'm just going to show you where to get the information from and we'll go into the definition of those a bit later okay so you can look through the page they have contacts numbers and everything like that and you can come to the bottom here and see now we go to a temporary business license so this gives you the information and everything the process the requirements and everything that you would need to get a temporary business license. Okay, so you can scroll down here. And last but not least, we're going to click on here. So this is the business license agreement. This is a copy of it. So the Auto Business License Act. So this is where you can find it if you wanted to browse it. And this basically has the regulations of um, the business license for more reference sake okay so we're going to come off here all right and we're going to go down here to this link applying for the first time big and bold so it's easy to find so we're going to click on this and this will actually take you to the department of inland revenue okay so this would be your first stop and so they have um, tabs up here it's a very nice it's actually a very nice site um, if you have VAT um questions or queries or everything like that you can just go down and so we are already on the page for applying for the first time okay so they have it broken down into four steps or four things that it's actually it's more recommendation because you don't necessarily have to do these but i also recommend you do these these steps so number two is more or less where we'll start but number we're going to go through number one i'm going to go through as much of this as we can so now let me put this over okay so number three um, when you get the agency's approvals and number four you come down and you're almost done so it's it's very very cut and dry um, they lead they have how many business days that you you know wait depending on what you need to do um, create an account and everything like that now this part we're not going to be covering in this part in the first part um, this is more some advanced steps and this is at the end of course so this this will most likely be covered in part two so we're going to come up and this is this is about what as far as we'll get today okay 
So we're going to go to number one. And we're going to click on this first one, which shows you a list of business types. Now, if you're thinking about a business and you could click on this and it will actually show you the nature of the business, the department that it's affiliated with, of course, the contract or the contact, not the contract. And yeah, so it's an alphabetical order. You could scroll down, um, only has eight pages. So this gives you information. It doesn't necessarily have, um, or you might not see contacts directly across from it, but it most likely, you know, doesn't need a contact for that particular agency. Or the one atop um, above it is what is what, what what actually would cover for it as well. Okay, so lawyers, um, everything you see you have in this little box. And I'm going to actually move this on the side so we can get a better view. All the way down to nursing and pharmacy, occasional license, so on and so forth, postal service. So all of these are potential business avenues. And you can just scroll down to look for which one that you're interested in. And this will give you what agency and the contact that you were that you would need. And this also gives you what you would need from them. And this would also give you, in these last two columns, you say what you need from them. And it says the type of business license you need to apply for. So the annual business license is the most common one. That's for one year. Um, all of those business licenses, they expire on the 31st of December, which is the end of every year. No matter what point of the year you get it, all of them expire at the same time. Um, and then they have some other ones. Um, which is upon application so these aren't necessarily or at least those ones are the more complicated ones we won't be going into those right now so for example if you if you need to go to the let's say ministry of health again if you're opening a kitchen or something like that that needs to be approved by them then it would show ministry of health and across from that show that you need a certificate of sanitation you see at the top there so Ministry of Health Services, Certificate of Sanitation, and you would need to apply for an annual business license. So those are the kind of things you'll find on that first one. So coming to the second one, click it. Okay, now this is more information wise. So we come back basically on the same kind of site and it works just like uh, the top there with these um, collapsible um, tabs. So this has the business acts, the amendments throughout the years, and these are all for references. Now, um, it's not 100% necessary. You don't have to look through these or anything like that. These are just the updates to it um, throughout the years. You know, they, they make the information readily available in case you need to check something. Um, maybe if there's like a legal issue or anything like that. So this would be the source to get them from. Okay. So you can just click on it. And this is the Business Act from 2010. They have the dates and everything. You can download PDF to your device if you want. And we come here and we have um, the, if you qualify for tax, um, basically VAT guidance, guidelines, um, business license process guide which is one that we that we looked into already um, and then we have the industrial I mean industry specific business license guide like liquor license okay so come with that and now we have departments so these would be the process guides for if you let's say have to get involved in environmental health if you have to get involved with um, the police force, um, physical planning, or anything like that, these are the process guides for that. So you can download them, you can click them, look at them, and this will tell you the process to get sorted out with them if you need a letter or something from them. So we're going to come back up here to this first one, and we're going to click on this, the general business license guide. Okay, so it takes you to this um, very nice little page here. And this would give you all the information that you need as the introduction and everything who needs business license. So this has frequently asked questions or you know queries that you would have if you want to really get details or um, be well versed in 
Bahamas business or business license processes. So these are the three business license types that I was telling you about earlier. Okay, so this is the annual one that I tell you about that I told you about expires in a year. And this is the temporary business license. So this is granted to foreign companies or things like that who need to just come into the country for a specific amount of time and then leave. So and this is the occasional license, which is granted to applicants carry for a short term purpose. They may be granted this not exceeding seven days. So this is if you are having like a fair, see, regatta, a farmer's market or something like that. This is basically a pop up, set up and then leave kind of business. So community event, and they have more listings here of what will qualify for that kind of license. And they also have a note down here says that um, non-profit organization entities are still considered businesses in case you're wondering okay so this is what with the annual on the 31st day of december all of them expire so if you get that on the 29th it expires the 31st so um except you know the other ones with the terms like the occasional and, and whatnot so these are the requirements for a business license so you need proof of Bahamian citizenship or approval by investment authority, foreign person. That's if you're um, not a not a Bahamian resident. And the permit, okay. Approval by Bahamas Investment Authority, foreign persons, companies, National Insurance Board. You have to be registered with National Insurance Board and lease or rental agreement. If you are renting a place or if you are doing this from home. You would need to depart. You would need to um, basically tell them where you live, where you're set up, and where you'll be operating from. So even if it's your personal home or business, you will have to let them know. And so all of these places are what you, who you need to contact, depending on what you need to get done. Okay. So um, yeah, all of this information is just here um, for whatever. And then um, it'll go a bit into, it's not really super detailed, but it's going to go into VAT regulations. So that's the section right here. And then um, before that, it just talks about liquor, if you want a liquor license, if it's sold here. Um, I'm not really going to go into the liquor license process, um, at least not now, not in this video, hopefully in a later video, because the process for this is kind of tricky and you know you need to get um, permissions and, and letters and everything so right now if you come down here so this is the fat situation okay so this lets you know or gives you a general idea of the tax percent that you are expected to pay for value added tax okay and then this is for a higher, a higher turnover, higher business turnover. So they have the percentage and then they have the rough estimate. So of course you would still have to calculate the amount because you're, you're most likely not going to make these exact amounts, but they have this chart to basically give you like a little, you know, a sense of it. Okay. So now we're going to come to this second step here. And this is technically the first step. This is where you start. Um, so this is, you, you could skip this step if you're, if you're a consolidating agency's application, um, because that's a different, of course, consolidation of agencies are more than one business combined. You're combining more than one business or entity. So we're going to click here on the first one to complete the trade name process, which is the first process that you need to complete. Okay. So we're going to come over here and the first thing you do this is a very simple page. Um, you decide whether it's an individual or partnership or registered or incorporated company. So most are going to start as an individual or maybe a partnership. So I'm going to click individual. I'm going to fill out the first um, parts of this section here. Okay. Now it's very important to get your email and everything because that's how they're going to be communicating you and sending you your documents if it once it's approved okay and all of the sections with the little red asterisk um, they have to be filled out for the for the um, application to be taken in 
Okay, now when it says agent, that just means if someone is doing this for you, they can put in their information and everything. Okay, like a, a third party. Okay, so I have my information filled in. Now, this part down here is very important. This is going to be what your business name is going to be. Okay, now um, you don't necessarily have to click this because this will make whatever you put in your first name, your, your trade name. So what you do right here, you put the first name, you put the second name that you would want, see, your second choice, and you put here the third name. Now what this does is if your first choice is taken, they'll give you a second choice. If your second choice is taken too, they'll give you a third choice, like that. So your nature of business, you just put, you know, a brief summary of what your business is. Um, you give them the street address, the city, um, Nassau, or depending on, you know, which island you are in. Region, you can leave blank because we're in the Bahamas. Um, and yeah, you just put in a PO box, you know, basic PO box. And right here it has island. So this is a drop down box. You just select which island you're from. So I have New Providence, you click that. And then we have the Bahamas, of course, is the country. And so we have the last thing, or at least thing before last, the phone number. So you want to also put in a valid phone number. This doesn't necessarily have to be the phone number of the business. Um, it's just something that they can reach you to, okay? But you want to make sure that your email and this information is correct because they, they are going to reach out to you electronically and you want to make sure that they could, they could get to you, okay? So make sure this telephone contact is correct. So after that, you just come to additional comments. I just put something in. And, um, I don't think that's necessary for you to... Uh, yeah, see, it doesn't have the asterisk. It's not necessary. But, you know, I just put that in because I felt like it. So you come down here to this big, big button. You could go over the page one more time to make sure all the information is correct because once you click Submit, all of this is going to be locked in. Okay? So we click Submit and... You watch the page page goes blank and you should receive the email shortly after that saying that your information is received now this process is very nice um, so far I've used it because as soon as I basically put my information in like I said like one to two days it I, I received a notification saying that whether it was um, accepted because they, they have you, you basically wait for three emails. The first email says that it was received. Um, the second email says that it was accepted. No, it's in review. Yes, the second email shows that or says that it's in review, it's being reviewed, someone is looking at it. And then the last email, if everything checks out, is going to show that you are, your trade name has been approved, which is the first step, and that's going to come from inland revenue. So after that, I believe the process is automated. When I say that, I mean um, inline revenue automatically sends it to, let's say you need to go to um, physical planning. Um, let's say if it's, if it's ran from your home or pri private residence, um, it goes to physical planning and then, you know, they'll have that process. And from there, if you need to go to, um, let's say, Ministry of Health or something like that, then that would be another process. After your trade name and everything has been approved, then you would need to contact them and then start from there or continue from there. Um, but that's as far as we're going to go in this video. Um, like I said, this is part one. Hopefully, I'll be able to release the other ones soon. Um, and if you have any comments or any questions, just let me know. Leave me some comments and I'll try to clarify or anything that I can. Okay, so until next time, stay safe.